promises. Huh? Don't let that discourage you. you here, here's the thing about this. Let's just say you go out, you're sick, uh, you know, and, and, and your life comes to an end. You can go out one of two ways. Believe in God for healing. Or you can, you can, you can die in doubt and quit believing God for healing. And, and I'm not telling you that's a, a going, you know, you're going to wind up in hell. But I'm telling you this. I'd much rather come to the other side. I was believing for healing. Rather than one that's going to show up, come to the other side, and they had they had they had abandoned believing God for the healing of the body. Come on, church. It's important that we continue to live by faith and to die in faith. And that's what these done. And, and one of the things was this. They all had this in common. They could say this world's not my home. I'm looking for a different country. I'm looking for a different place. And it's sad to say, but I believe many today are not looking for a different country. They're not looking for a different place. They're just looking for more and more ways to put up more than Ben Franklin's. That just seemed to be, and you know what? If you, uh, it, it, it's okay to have money, but money can't have you. And there's many today that really and truly their God is what I'm talking about. I was watching a, a, a little movie this morning, an older movie about the life of Jesus, and he was sharing with them, and he said, uh, you can't serve money, and you can't serve God. You can serve God, and you can have money. I don't know why I keep going here, but the truth of the matter is, uh, you're going to love one, you cannot have two masters. You're going to love one, you're going to hate the other. And somewhere along your race you're running, you will make a choice. And I'm not telling you that you're going to have to live a life of poverty. I'm not telling you you're going to have to make a vow of poverty. I'm telling you, you can be very prosperous. You can be very wealthy. But you can have God as number one in your life. And don't let something else be number one. That's what these have in common. And whenever you get things out of whack, you're going to, you're going to become discouraged with God. You're, gonna, you're not going to run your race with patience like they did. Let's read on. 14 says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They're seeking a country. 15 says, And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they may have had opportunity to have returned. So what he's talking about here is they, they were declaring, I'm, I'm seeking the country. This world is not my home. The Bible says, come out and be separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. There, you know, there, there will come a time when there's a separation done by God the Father. And we know in, in Matthew there, he said, I'm going to put the sheep on one side, I'm putting the goats on the other side. There, he's going to separate one day. He's going to judge one day. But while we're on this side, we've been given time to prepare. We've been given time to be part of that sheepfold where it's going to be uh, accepted of him and we're going to be part of God's kingdom. And, and these knew that this world was not their home. I'm just passing through. And I think we need to keep that kind of mentality, keep that kind of thinking, because I want to be part of this group here that died in the faith. Can you say amen to that? Amen. 16. It says, but now they desire a better country. The best is yet to come, church. That is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. What's that? What we were intended to have, where we were intended to be, God has prepared. You remember what Jesus said? I go to prepare a place for you. Y'all remember that? There's a connection here. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again. He left to prepare a place for us. That country has been prepared. That place has been prepared. And we need to, I'm, uh, we've got to keep that way of thinking. You know, when uh, things might not work out here, there, there may be bad days here. 
Let that help you. Let, let that encourage you to continue to run your race in patience and say, you know what? This isn't going to amount to a hill of beans. I'm telling you, this is not going to amount to a hill of beans in light of eternity. There's things that go on and transpire and take place and it just seems like the end of the world. And you know a year later how you look back? <laughs> Mouse to nothing now. And that's just about how everything here on this side is. What's your biggest goal? What's your biggest dream as far as possessions go? And then you know, uh, 40 years from now, what's that going to be worth? Seriously. Be careful. Be careful to not get sidetracked. Be careful to not lose sight of this. They knew there was a better place coming. They knew there was a better country coming. And they never lost sight of the fact that I'm headed for home. I'm headed for home. <coughs> when we have funerals and people pass, and it is definitely painful, it is definitely sad. But when they left a testimony like this, we have to, we have to come to grips with the truth. That's what they were living for. That's what they were headed for. You know, and, and, and uh, I've had people pass and, and it hurts and it's painful, but that's, that's my loss. But for them, there ought to be a great cheer. Hallelujah, they made it. The race is over. There's no more tears. There's no more sorrow. There's no more sickness. Let that encourage you. We might get rejected here. We might go to try to apply for something and we get turned down or we want to be a part of this team or a part of this group and, and we suffer rejection. But Jesus said he'll never cast us out. He'll never turn us away. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And we can become connected to the kingdom of God and, and never, ever even let the thought into your mind rejected. That's what the enemy would like for you to think. But he does not reject his own. As a matter of fact, he says it's his good pleasure to give the kingdom to the children. As a matter of fact, he said, I'm going to give you all things necessary for life and godliness on this side and the side to come. This group of witnesses that had went on, they had all this figured out. But with all the new, I don't know how you say it correctly, but uh, there's a lot of crazy ways of thinking now. And they try to instill it in kids at a young age now. It's more anti-God in this country than ever been. Even in the school systems, what's taught and this, that, and the other. It's because we want to, they, they want to, the, the, this uh, leftist agenda, you might say. They want to instill in people a crazy way of thinking that would make it so much harder for them to be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's many in this country today that would love to see in God we trust taking off our money. They would love to see the Bibles gathered up and discarded. How come? Because it hinders their agenda. <coughs> the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, we have to discover. And we got to look at those. You know how it is. When you're young, you think you know more than mom and daddy. And when you get older, you're like, you know what? Mama has some stuff figured out. Mama wasn't all wrong. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And if you hadn't come to that place yet, you will. I said you will. They had this figured out a long time ago. And they're so, so thankful, so, so glad that they made the right choice. Here's where I'm at. Make the right choice. We're passing through. We're passing through. This life is what? But a vapor. It's here one day, it's gone the next. Then, you enter eternity. Are you ready for eternity? Are you running that race with patience? With your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith? 
Is that where you're at today? Here's the great thing. It's not too late. You start fresh. You start new. But it's up to you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got to call. You got to choose. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. <coughs> Thank God for the word. Thank God for the light. But here's where it's at. We set this holiday aside for the wars, the veterans, the sacrifices that were made. And that's fine. That's great. Thank you. But I'm telling you right now, where you will spend eternity is more important than anything. And I say let's remember those heroes of our faith that we have placed in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. If you would please stand, we're going to pray again.